How to Love with Pat's Two Cents. This is a hard subject for me, but this is the question that came to my mind. Why me? Somebody's asking God, why me? I don't know what you're going through, and I'm not going to be the first to make light of it because there are some things, if it happened to me, I might ask the same question. It's a natural question to ask, why me? So let me try to be a source of comfort there, even though I don't know what it's all about. Um, I remember one of the hardest things for me to understand was why did one of the men in our church have to go blind? He was warm-hearted, hospitable, very giving, uh, friendly, oh man, very faithful, took care of business, very mature. I, I couldn't figure out why. And I'm sure he asked for the longest when he was first going through the adjustment of not being able to see anything but black. Why me? You know, sometimes, mm, sometimes there are more pieces to the puzzle than you're aware of. It could be a case like with Job where Satan challenged God and said, you let me at him and I'll show you he'll turn his back on you. And God took the challenge. It was basically a waiver, a wager. And God believed in and trusted Job with this trial period for seven years. Even his wife said, why don't you just curse God and die? She was sick of him. Well, he did not. And as a result, everything that he lost, family, children, houses, cattle, everything that died in his life, God restored big time because he remained faithful through the why me part. Woo! I'm trying not to get emotional because why me is a very difficult question. It's a very difficult place to be in your life and I know it's very painful the other why me is possibly because God wants to burn some things out of your spirit that will hinder you from making it over in the long run it will be that thorn in your flesh that will not only trip you up but will suck you out of the safety of salvation because you will react and do some stupid things that can cause, that can wreak havoc in your life until the day you die and maybe even throughout eternity by some of the choices you make. So there are times when God has to put a leash around you and the leash is for your protection it's unpleasant. It may be painful. And sometimes pain softens our hearts, tenderizes our hearts, and softens our spirits, and humbles our minds. Sometimes pain is a necessary evil. Sometimes hardship is a necessary evil. I, I'm trying to paint this picture so you don't get that God is punishing you and beating you up and beating you down. God is not sadistic. He feels your pain. He is right there with you. But there's a bigger issue going on that you don't see. Let, let me share this. Thank you, Lord. Wow. God uses everyday experiences to make examples. I was watching a movie last night about a man who was, he had protected this girl from being raped. And then as they were running, they were in danger and he was protecting her. And he ended up getting a slither of something very dangerous in his leg and it was close to his artery. And the bleeding was just like pouring out like he just poured a pitcher 
of honey out. It was just pouring out. And he told her, he said, take this knife. He said, take this blowtorch, burn it until it's, it's cold red, and give it to me. And she did. And this is what he had to do. This was a necessary evil. God, I hope you get what I'm saying. He pressed the cold, hot knife against his flesh. After he pulled the item, whatever the item was, as soon as he pulled it out, the blood came gushing out. Well, he took the knife and, and, and literally uh, just burned it. Just burned it until the flesh was a solid burnt mass. And he had to bear up under that pain. Then he told her, go on the other side, burn the knife, get it red hot. And now I need you, while I'm pressing on this side, I need you to burn the other side of my leg. She did it. It was a necessary evil. Here is the thing. Had she not cooperated with him, had he not had the help and had the mind to inflict the pain on himself, he would have bled out and died right there on the spot. Within four or five minutes, he would have been gone. And she would have been by herself. Now, my point in telling you is there are other people involved in this scenario. There are other things that are connected to this. Whatever your why me is, God, his ways are above our ways, his thoughts above our thoughts. There's no finding him out. There's no figuring him out. But there are some necessary evils in life. And we feel like it's unfair because it hurts. And we feel like, well, Lord, I'm walking with you. I'm talking with you. I'm serving you. Why me? I can't answer that. All I can say is, from what I said, try to hold on to your faith with every ounce of your being. Hold on to your faith. Don't turn your back on God because it feels horrible, but it may be saving your life. It may be saving a family member's life. It may be saving your soul or their soul. Something is being saved through this hardship. I hope that encourages you. But keep believing. No matter what you do, keep believing. The Lord will see you through. He will not leave you. He will not forsake you. Do you hear me? God bless you. God is in the foxhole with you. You're not alone.